Fun Ideas Productions presents the Fun Ideas Podcast. Hi, this is Mark Arnold, and welcome to Fun Ideas Podcast number 117. This episode is sponsored by the fine folks at Lee's Comics. From high atop the stately Lee's Comics mansion, we bring you the Lee's Comics Radio Hour with tonight's special guests, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, Cerebus the Aardvark, and yours truly, Wally Fields. Friends, have you tried Lee's Comics? Lee's Comics is better than the leading comic book store. Wait a minute. Lee's Comics is the leading comic book store, based on arbitrary standards set by Lee Hester himself. Lee's Comics eBay store is still going strong with over 10,000 vintage comics, the majority of which are now on sale. For half off, choose from Lee's huge stock of golden, silver, bronze, and modern age comics, and specializing in Silver Age Marvel titles. You can count on friendly service, accurate grading, and quick, secure shipping, backed by a money-back guarantee. To check out Lee's eBay store, go to eBay. Click Advanced Search to the left of the search bar. Scroll down to Sellers and enter Lee's Comics, Inc., period. That's L-E-E-S-C-O-M-I-C-S-I-N-C, period. Don't forget the period. Lee's Comics is shipping daily with no delays. New items daily. Mention the Fun Ideas podcast and get a free bonus gift. Long title, Looking for the Good Times, Examining the Monkey Song One by One by Michael A. Ventrella and Mark Arnold. A book that examines each song, gives lots of details about each song, and our own personal opinions. You can find this book on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, and anywhere where good books are being sold. Our webpage is wordpress.monkeys.com, where you can see many of the songs and give your own opinions of them. And we will be discussing this more on Zilch. Hey, Michael, it says here we've written another book about the monkeys. Wasn't the first one enough? Not at all, Mark. Our original book, Looking for the Good Times, Examining the Monkey Songs One by One, was very successful, but only covered half the story. Which half? The group half. Our new book, Headquartered, A Timeline of the Monkey's Solo Years, covers the solo half. Who knew the monkeys record so many solo albums? Not only that, but this book covers all of their solo projects, including stage shows, horse racing, running record labels, directing and starring in TV shows and movies, voice acting, and jail. Jail? Did the monkeys go to jail? Ah, you have to read the book to find out. you sold me. Have you sold them? Who, who, who's them? Those people out there listening to this. Well, listen to this. This book has discographies, photos, and other information about the prefab for Mickey, Davey, Peter, and Mike, the solo monkeys, plus another nifty cover by Scott Shaw. Wow, he did our last cover. And this one's equally good. Where can you get this masterpiece? Announcer. Announcer? That's me. <clears throat> get Headquartered, a timeline of the monkey solo years, written by Michael A. Ventrella and Mark Arnold. Those two guys. It's available in hardback, paperback, or ebook from BearManorMedia.com or from Amazon. Get your copies today. Cool. I'm going to get one today. I just turned in my book about Pac-Man, and I have no news about the Warren Kremer book, or the TTV scrapbook, or the Disney book. I'm still working on my Mad book, the Kool-Aid Man article, as well as articles about the Richie Rich comic strip and Charlton Comics. Letters, we get letters. Here's another comment about a recent episode from Barefoot Bears. They say, Spanky and our gang were great. 
Sunday Will Never Be the Same was my favorite song of theirs. What Spanky did with her voice in that song, Sunday Will Never Be the Same, with that sort of reverb in her voice was so great. Anyway, my son does rap music. I would love to hear Spanky do a collaboration with him where she raps a few words. Wouldn't that be great? Anyway, love this interview. Send Spanky my love, and thank you for the great memories and for being a significant part of the songbook of my life. On today's show, we have a man who wrote songs like Elusive Butterfly and Down in Suburbia. Here he is, Bob Lind, interviewed by special guest host Charles Rosenay. Great. How are you today? All right, fine, thanks. And you're the guy doing the story on the Beatles, on the, on the Turtles, huh? Yeah, now, that, that was just Freudian because you said Beatles first. And, and uh, I produced the Beatle conventions across the country. <laughs> oh, man, are you? No, who's Jamie Hoover? Well, he's my producer for one thing, but for another thing, he's a, he was the a leader of a band called the Sponge Tone. Oh my gosh, the, one of the most Beatles bands of all time. There you go, there you go. So subliminally, I, or, or whatever it is, subconsciously rather, uh, that, 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 that's the first go-to name, right? The Beatles. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you, you got it. Well, of course, you probably already know about the Beatles. A lot of people do. But, <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's got the, Jamie's got little plastic statues of him on his dashboard. I mean, he, he, he's crazy about the Bat Beatles. Are those guys, are those guys still around, the, the Sponge Tones? Not as the Sponge Tones. Once in a while, he'll work with, uh, he does a million things. He's producing me on this new album, and he has produced the, produced the album before this and most of the album uh, just, just before that one, so... So, so is he making you um, uh, British invasion-y? Is he making... <laughs> he's very flexible. And, uh, and he's, uh, he's been a, a long-time fan of mine, too, longer than I was ever aware of him. And then he, he contacted me, and, and we, you know, he played on this documentary they did on me not too long ago. And he's a fantastic uh, producer, and he, and he, and he listens yeah, that's my problem with producers. A lot of times, they've got their own little, uh, you know, Svengali thing they want to do, and they want the artist to sort of represent them. And he doesn't do that. He listens. So right. He's a good guy. But he, he's he's musically wide open. He's just got this incredible musical vista. Now, why did I think the Sponge Tones were South Carolina? Aren't you Florida? Yeah. And you're in yeah. Florida? No, no, we're no, we I'm in Florida. We're doing this thing which is not my favorite way to work. I don't like recording anyway, but the, this is, you know, we, he'll, I'll send him the demo. He'll work up a track. He'll send the track back to me. I'll ask for corrections. He'll make them. He sends them back. I put a vocal or a guitar on, send it back to him. He gets a piano player on and does a mix. It's, it's ice cold, man, especially for a guy my age. You know, I think about music is you're in the studio or on stage and you're, feeding off each other. I'm, I'm much more of a jazz kind of guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, but the thing is, is that that is uh, the, that's the big situation calls for it, especially with this COVID shit. Right. Obviously, that's that's the way of the world, I guess, nowadays. <clears throat> but um, wow. So about myself, uh, I, I've been doing a lot of celebrity and, and m mostly music p people interviews as a, as a spinoff of I just published a book which is a, a weird book called uh, the book of a uh, uh, top 10 horror lists. And I asked celebrities and, and, and music people, rock stars, authors, composers to submit to me their favorite top 10 horror lists. <laughs> and that came out great. And now my follow-up, believe it or not, has nothing to do with that. We're doing a book on the turtles. Yeah. And, and, you know, in doing the research and looking at the book is more, more of a discography than anything else. Well, you know, I'm seeing all these people who I never knew wrote songs that the Turtles covered. And this is a uh, sort of similar to a book that just came out a while ago uh, on the monkeys. And the monkeys had Carol King and John Stewart, Neil Diamond, Neil Sedak, you know, amazing people. <clears throat> and, and I thought, well, did Bob Lind ever write for the monkeys? And I couldn't find a credit for that. But sure enough, the Turtles had you uh, as a songwriter. Yeah. Is that a song that you, you well, go right to that one. Was it only one song that, that you did? Yeah. yeah. The first thing I can tell you is that I'm not going to be 
very much help with my memory is not sharp but for the for the past especially way way this right but i cannot say enough good about the turtles about um, uh, you know mark and howard are just incredible guys um here's something of note they were the absolute first band the first artists to cover one of my songs this was months before elusive butterfly was even released right and so they had no idea who i was they just came in the metric looking for for material and i had this song called uh, i don't know if you're interested in this much detail I'll i am i am more, more I had this song yeah called, uh, nobody smokes marijuana in suburbia mm -hmm. and uh, and i walked into the publishing i, I had no idea which if any of my songs were going to get covered but you know and lenny warnker told me he said listen he said the, the turtles are going to do one of your songs and i said which one he said he said the, nobody smokes marijuana in suburbia. I said, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. These, these guys were writing, uh, you know, uh, it ain't me, babe, you know. Uh, they were megastars then, you know. Yeah. And, of course, uh, you know, and I don't remember how I met them, but they were so incredibly generous with their time and their counsel and uh you know they they came over to my place and uh you know they i was in the studio when they when they recorded uh that oh and of course white whale scared shirtless made them change the title right so uh, so then it, now it was called down down in, in suburbia right <laughs> and they, and they couldn't even say the word they had to say all they ever smoked is if, to, you, if you notice tobacco you know, phrase, yeah then, all they ever smoked you know, and, and the line was, nobody smokes marijuana that fits the meter perfectly, you know, but they had to squeeze it in Dylan's style, you know, to uh, to make it work. Right. But, uh, but I, I just think, you know, from just from a, a personal standpoint, how helpful they had been to me over the years. You know, we, we, we toured together uh, in, in a, it was a big, massive tour. We went all up to, uh, to, uh, Oregon and Washington from, from Los Angeles and, and you know they, there's all kinds of people I don't remember who else was on the bill but uh, and they just have been just so helpful to me so anything good I can say about them I want it on the record had you not toured with them would you have met them is that common for a songwriter to have their song re uh, recorded by someone and, and then meet the artist no, I don't know how common it is. Most of the, I have over two hundred covers. On my songs. Incredible, right? And I don't, I don't, I, I know very few of them personally. Yeah. Uh, they either hear hear them on my records or they hear them in person. Uh, you know, they'll come to a to a to a gig or or they'll see. Now, you know, it's YouTube. You know, I mean, you can just get anything you want on YouTube now. Yeah. And uh, but but no, I, as I say, I had known them way before. I just knew them because uh, uh, Lenny, you know, Lenny Warnka, who was the head of Metric Music, my publishing company then, must have introduced us, or I have no idea, but they, but I remember that they, they were over at my little shabby apartment. This was when I was making $50 a week from my publishing company. You know, there was just a little retainer against royalties. Yeah. Uh, and they would do it, uh, they'd give me $50 a month. Yes. So I had this little shabby you know, uh, what do you call that? The studio apartment. It wasn't. It wasn't the Brill Building, huh? <laughs> no, it was. No, I'm talking about where I live. I didn't have a rehearsal studio. Yeah, it was yeah. Just my apartment. <laughs> but uh, I, I remember that they came over and uh, and uh, and hung out with me, and uh, I, you know, I remember you know being at the session with them, and uh, you know, just very unstar like. Yeah. You know, they, uh, and as a matter of fact, you know. Uh, they were so down down to earth, I guess is the word. Uh, and I thought they were just flakes, just like me. I thought they were just, you know, these guy, you know, stoners with no awareness of anything but the music. And I didn't realize for a long time how astute they are, how sharp they are about music, the music business. They know everything. I don't know whether it's because they got ripped off at one point. But boy, they, if you want to know anything about how to handle yourself in the business, they're the guys to talk to. I don't, I'm sure you must know that about. Yeah. Have you stayed in touch with them through the years? Not, you know, sporadically I'll get in touch with them. Um, 
the last contact I had with them was when I was just starting back into the music business. Uh, I took a long vacation, which is a story of another interview. If we, we interview each of you, care to interview me later when the album comes out. Oh, by the way, you say this while it's on my mind. So sorry about your emails and, and Joe. This is, you know, apparently she never got your first three emails. Well, I did. Yeah, you did a great job of keeping me informed of that because had you not responded, that would have just, it would have gone into the wilderness. So you were really great about being on top of that. And I don't know, maybe when I switched from the account, it was a different account that I finally emailed her on. Then she started getting them. So I really, I, th th that happens in the clouds. I don't know why. It's yeah, like yeah. in the well, old. Because anyway, she's very professional. She's not, you know, she's, she's not like me. She's not, not flaky <laughs> at all. She's very conscientious. And then, of course, you know that her dad died recently, just a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Anyway, all right. So um, anyway, to keep us on the point, I really don't, I don't know what else I can say about that, then, except that, or, or about the uh, down in suburbia, except the fact that, that they didn't like white whale even then. Even then, there was these animosities uh, brewing. You know, they had a, I don't know what, what uh, uh, it ain't me they did on. The, I, I think it must have must have been in the top five. Sure. Uh, at least, uh, you know, and uh, they were they were surprised actually that they never heard from Dylan. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I never heard from Dylan a, a word about the about the song and the thing. And you know, Dylan wasn't well, commonly covered then. I mean, obviously the birds and Mr. Tambourine Man. But yeah. At that point, you know, I mean, he, he was helping. They were helping him a lot. Mm -hmm. But anyway, <laughs> that's, that's the way it goes. I think years later he saw them live, and he said to them, "You guys should should cover that song," <laughs> cluelessly. Who said that? Dylan. Yeah. <clears throat> that's that's a rumor. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. Um, so, really, I don't know what else to tell you about the turtles. No, that's very helpful. Um, the song itself, <clears throat> I mean, it, it, it resonates. You know, it's still, it's really crazy that you mentioned, and they, they picked on that one song, you know, lines like, Everybody has a list, you know, Negroes, Jews, communists, and checks it off before their daughter marries. I mean, that, these are strong lines for the time. It's amazing that, you know, a, 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 a band of that uh, mainstream would record it. Forget, you know, who cares? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, 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 it took, and, you know, they wanted to go with the original title and the original line, mm. you know. And, uh, they, you know, because they could see that the things were changing. I mean, you know, anybody who was spending time sort of, on the street or around, you know, knew at that time that the things were about to burst wide open and all this repressive shit was about to get thrown over. But, you know, I never considered the song that good a song. It was just, it was, you know, a little kind of cheap satire of, of the, uh, you know, of American society at the time. And, and but, I, uh, I, I do admire them covering it. Oh, absolutely! Did, you, did they when they did it live? Did they do the correct the correct uh, title? And I don't think I ever saw them do it live. <clears throat> right. I saw them in the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a recording of the song that's out there? No, I don't think I would ever re that song would be so far down the list of things I would ever re-record. I mean, yeah. I like what they did with it, you know, but uh, it's it's really. I, and it makes a lot of my old stuff just makes me cringe. <laughs> well, wait, over 200 songs recorded, you know, by, by artists around the world. Uh, you can't, you got, I mean, you got to love most of them. You're going to tell me that a lot of them make you cringe, number one. And number two, have you, have you not recorded most of them yourself? Some of them I have, some of them I haven't. Um, you know, my, my favorite covers are, are not the ones of Elusive Butterfly. And they're not the ones in which the artist uh, imitates me. You know, you hear that a lot. You know, they, they think they're, and, and, and to their credit, they, they, they want to be true to the spirit of the song. So a lot of times they'll record things just the way I do the demo. Mm -hmm. But the, the songs I like the most, are, you know, like, uh, well, Richie Haven's uh, How the Nights Can Fly, his was the first recording of it. Later I recorded it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what else? Let's see. A long time woman. I never recorded. Uh, Nancy Sinatra covered that one. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, so I, I, I 
forget your original question, buddy. What was it again? <laughs> no, I, I asked uh, of all those songs. Uh, I, I would hope it was more of a statement that most of them you're proud of, as opposed to cringed, cringed by. <laughs> it, it, it depends on the indi- individual song. There are songs that, that, yeah, I think I think are good. So I think "Lucy Butterfly" is a good song. Uh, I, I think that "The Cheryl's Going Home" is a good song. Uh, there's a, a lot of covers of that one too. Mm-hmm. But the, the, you know, a, a lot of these things. I, I guess what it is is not so much. That they that, that they make from the songs on let's say my first album the first album that I count not the Lucy Boblin which is a bootleg piece of shit uh-huh. is uh, don't be concerned and photographs of feeling those songs are some of them are are okay but it's just miles away from from what I'm doing now which I think is so much better and and I think that that's come through from Jill you know when when we first. <clears throat> Uh, approached about um, either getting that top 10 list from you for the book or doing an interview with regarding the the, the turtles connection um, I think she portrays she gives that you know let let or just want you to know that we don't want to talk elusive butterfly and let's talk about what he's currently doing let's talk about his career and his overview and if you notice you're you bring it up I, I haven't even asked about elusive butterfly because yeah, well, I don't, I don't get me wrong. <laughs> Fly. Right. It's just I don't, don't want to live there. Right. And uh, you know, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to mention it or anything like that. It's just that, that compared to what I'm doing now, I don't think it's as good a song. Right. And uh, and and again, like in, in a case like this, I'm doing absolutely nothing except recording this album. That's why I was saying let's defer the interview if you still want to do one later. You know, uh, we'll we'll definitely do it. Maybe you could check with me yeah. in, uh, oh, I don't know, September or so, and we'll, we'll see what's going on. And in fact, Jill, will, Jill keeps up all these records, and we will notify you when the, when the album comes out. And if you want to talk, talk to me then, that'd be great. Yes, and uh, then I want to get you on a show that's going to go out, you know, internationally. It's the Plastic EP show out of Australia. And um, it, it would get a lot more ears and, and a lot more eyeballs and a lot more publicity and a lot, you know, that's the key to all these interviews is you want yes. the world to know when you have a new recording. Uh, and, you know, in this day and age, it's so, so weird. You know, you put out an album and you can, a million of people could listen to it or, you know, it could be, your, you know, your, your, your family and friends. It's just such a strange existence. Well, everybody is making records now. Anybody can make it now. Anybody. And, you know, whether you get promotion or whether you get a good label, like, you know, I mean, I just have, can't say enough good about uh, Ace Records, you know, they're the ones who put out my last two albums. And they, they're just, they're, there's not a, a money-grubbing, uh, you know. Mentality. Yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 they love music, and, uh, and it was a labor of love for them, too. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't the same at uh, Liberty World Pacific, I guess. <laughs> well, no, it, you know, I, I, you know, you can't blame. Uh, I know we're off the subject here, but you know, you can't blame uh, record companies. That they, they, they're there to make money. They, you know, they, I, I wonder sometimes if you know if if they even like music. You know, they're attorneys now. They're they're bean counters. They're you know, and and they they're they're trying to give the artist a, a voice but they want to impose their own thing over them because they're nervous about the money. Mm-hmm. Well, you, know, you can't blame that. I just stay away from it. I'd sure. rather, much rather be with a label that, that, uh, that loves music and particularly loves my music and doesn't try to tell me what to record or what to change or what, what the album needs and all that. That's what you get when, when uh, you, go, you sign with a label that, that is, you know, investing a lot of money. In you. Uh, it makes sense. And, and I think you're in a position of life where hopefully you've recorded enough songs that you have your own uh, choice of what you record, who you record with, how it comes out. Jamie's your producer. It seems like the the right um, the combination of things are in place. Yeah, well, I hope so. I, I hope uh, you know my last two albums have made any money. You know, I mean, I'm I'm still in the red with them, but they they, they don't seem to care. Mm. I, don't, I don't get them. But the, don't let. Oh, let's not remind them of that. You know? 
Well, you know, you're a prestige artist. You're, it's, it's, you still want, if you're a label, <laughs> you still need some, you know, important names and you're still an important name uh, because you're still recording. And, you know, there, there's always somebody who may pick up a song and record it and it may be a hit. You know, so that that, right. that goes on forever. You know, there's a bigger picture. I just, I just, if you don't mind me asking about your first ever recording session, you were with these guys, the the Wrecking Crew kind of people, right? Uh, the Hal Blaine's and all that. Yeah, yeah <clears throat> and, Hal Blaine and Carol Kay mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, you know, the, who, I can't remember who's like like Le Leon Russell was on. Like. Leon Russell. But what surprised yeah. me is is my friend uh, Henry Diltz was on yeah. on banjo. Yeah. <laughs> and Hen Henry, God bless him, you know, still kicking and one of the great, uh, forget that he was a stu stu uh, studio musician, uh, one of the most uh, well-known rock photographers ever. He, you know, he did uh, this, the, the photography for my last uh, two albums and has been, another guy who's been incredibly helpful to me. He has, you know, gotten me gigs on, on his say-so. Mm -hmm. you know and he's a wonderful guy well so how are we doing we just you got just about everything you need on the yeah yeah we just want to um uh, a few things before we qu before we quit sure. I, I won't keep you much longer uh, right. i, I want to do a follow-up a hundred percent when the new album's out and i i just and that's all i really want to talk about when that comes out we don't, don't even you know not even a mention of, of uh pack stuff unless it's uh, in in um, in you know connection with the new stuff. Yeah, yeah don't, don't don't get the wrong idea here. I mean, a lot of you know, I still play Elusive Butterfly every time I play. Mm -hmm. Every every show I do, you know, I I, I include Elusive Butterfly because people want to hear it, and I, and it's all right. I just don't want people to think, oh yeah, he's that Elusive Butterfly guy. Well, it's 19, yeah. 1965. It's a long time ago. <laughs> You know, and uh, the fact that, you know, he's still around, still kicking, still writing, still recording. Are you still touring? Uh, not right now. Well, obviously. forget forget pand oh. pandemic. I mean, when, when the world is normal. Oh, yeah, of course. And you, of course. And, and you go out and play. Yeah, if you go to my website, you see where, where, where I, the kind of thing I do. I play Europe and I play. America. But let's again let's talk about that when we when we do the real interview. Yeah, but but give me your website so I'll always have that handy. What is it? In a blinding flash of creativity, I came up with boblin.com. Oh see now no one will ever remember that one. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to remember any capitals or <laughs> Bob is is uh, Lenny from Metric Music still alive? I have no idea. Wow. Well, I would assume he, he is. Huh? Yeah, interesting. Um, I think then uh, we got, unless you could think of any other turtle stories or anything else that stands out about that, we can, uh, you know, we can put a wrap on her for this. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 you'd have to ask me specific questions. I, I, as again, I just say uh, their, their looseness, if you will. They're mm -hmm. just loose, you know, goofy kind of a, a flaky facade is, is, uh, is, is, I'm sure that aspect of them is real, but it blinds people to the fact that these guys know more about the business than almost any artist. Sharp, yeah. Talk to, yeah. You know. Are you going to interview them for this? I I'm hoping. You know, Howard isn't in 100% great shape. He's, he's no longer touring. Um, Ron Dante has taken his place in that Happy Together um, touring show. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and you, you know, it's funny because I, I, I mentioned my book a few times. The first person I ever approached, it was on Facebook, I sent him a message and said, would you like to contribute a top 10 horror list to this book? And he wrote back, you must know I love horror. You got it. And uh, okay, so I waited and checked in, a, you know, few months later, half year later. Well, we're, we're 11 years later <laughs> and I'm still asking him for the list. So who knows? <laughs> well, yeah, they, they, they are busy and they're, and they're you know, I, I, I just know that, that for me, uh, I, I think, can think of very few people have been, who have been more helpful with their, with their advice and their counsel. And did, did you, I know you're in the studio with them and you recorded with them. Did you, uh, and you, and no, I'm sorry. Record with them. Oh, you were, right. In the studio with you were in the studio them. with them and you toured with them at, at some point. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, there were a lot of people on that tour. That was one of those packages where they put together yeah, the, exactly. the acts of the exactly. time. And did you have anything to do with anyone besides in the band besides Mark and uh, Howard or they were the band? 
Uh, yeah, well, the, they were the band to me. You know, later on, Cyrus, uh, I mean, uh, uh, um, got Chip joined them. You know, and uh, and I, I knew Chip, but not in that context. Right, Chip Douglas. Yeah. Cool. Well, but I can't thank you enough for your time. And well, thank you for your interest, Charles. I appreciate it. And you really, you know, give me a lot of good stuff on, on the guys on the turtles, and that that was, you know, the main gist of this particular one. I'm looking forward to us talking again in detail, and then when the new album comes out, we're going to do everything we All can. Right. Well, what I could do, you know, go ahead and check in September, and <laughs> if it's sooner than that, uh, Jill keeps these records, and we'll uh, we'll we'll contact you. Uh, if you know, if, if it's uh, if it's later or before, tremendous. Before. Stay Thank safe. You, Thank you. I appreciate it too. Stay safe and healthy. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. Bye. So you've been listening to our uh, chat with Bob Lind, whose uh, song "Elusive Butterfly" was a huge monster hit in the mid '60s, and. Um, you know, uh, before the interview, we were really kind of warned that he doesn't want to talk about Elusive Butterfly and his past. He don't want to talk about the future. Um, what's cool is that he brings it up and he brings up why he doesn't want to. And in that context, we're actually talking about, um, that's a classic song, you know, classic folk um, rock, rock song that came out uh, in 1965, I think, or written in 65 and charted in 1966. But um, uh, yeah, uh, that was good, good, good enough interview because we got to talk about some things that we really needed to know. And we're going to listen to his song right now and put an end to this uh, interview. Bob Lind, Elusive Butterfly. Thank you, Bob. Take over. You might wake up some morning to the sound of something moving past your window in the wind. And it- thank you for listening, and thank you, Bob Lind, for being my special guest, and Charles Rosene for hosting. Episode number 118 will be coming soon. If you would like to comment and or be a guest on this podcast, please drop me a line at funideas.mark at gmail.com. Become a patron of Mark Arnold and Fun Ideas Productions. If everyone listening just contributed a dollar a month, that would be a tremendous help in continuing the production of my books and this podcast. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. The opening and closing music for the Fun Ideas Podcast is provided courtesy of Danny Salazi of the characters and is used with permission. This has been the Fun Ideas Podcast. This is Mark Arnold speaking. This episode is copyright 2021 Fun Ideas Productions. Thank you and good night.